Hi there, I'm Bernie Torme and I'm here to answer all those crazy questions you asked me. Or part of them anyway, because there's a lot of them, so as many as I can. Okay, first uh, question is from Craig Isherwood. Hi Bernie, you have had a long, successful and varied career where you have clearly embraced new challenges and the opportunity to um, work with many talented artists um, with such a high quality back catalogue. What continues to inspire you? Um, I just enjoy playing, I enjoy writing and I enjoy playing, uh, Craig. It's, uh, I'm not a kind of a complicated person in terms of that. I don't have an, an agenda about it all, it's just I enjoy doing it. And then Craig asks again, your band, Chris Holman and Ian um, Harris are amazing musicians and you clearly have a fantastic chemistry both on and off stage. How did you first all come together? Well, um, Chris Holman I've known since 1984. Um, I was actually on tour promoting a live album. That sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? Kind of doing a tour to promote a live album. And uh, Chris played bass. Um, I'd actually asked uh, John uh, McCoy, only he wasn't available, and John suggested Chris. So I tried Chris out and he was great. He was about, I don't know, 12 years old at the time or something like that. But uh, And after that, Chris and I played uh, together in Torme. And then Chris um, absconded to the US um, to join um, Shark Island and he played with a lot of people in the US and then he came back to England and I was in touch again and at the point I was recording Flowers and Dirt I hadn't a bass player so um, I asked Chris and that's how it happened. Um, ooh, ooh, Chris is amazing uh, to play with and a nice guy to boot. Um, at the point I was recording Flowers and Dirt I actually had a different drummer, um, Simon, and Simon because of family obligations had to bail out and I was totally like in the middle of um, recording it and I didn't have a drummer and uh, a friend of mine, uh, Baz um, Nichols from a band called Moore um, suggested Ian, Ian Harris and I tried Ian out and it was just absolutely fantastic what a great player and lovely bloke and um, it's been it's been bliss what a band. Best band I've ever had, I think. Rick Friel commented, You are one of my favourite guitar players of all time. My favourite is Ace Fraley. Are you a fan of his playing? I am, yeah. I mean, you know, the Kiss tracks Ace uh, played on are just great. God of um, Thunder, all of those classic, classic tracks. Um, I don't know a great amount about him out of the context of KISS, um, so you know perhaps um, you can enlighten me. You know the thing is he's about, he's approximately the same age as I am, so you tend not to have heroes who are the same age as you, you know it tends to be older people who you grew up, you know, going my god what a player. And um, I recently had some uh, guy on YouTube saying if I had um, if I had had a name like Ace Fraley as opposed to Bernie Torme, I'd have been so famous. So he said I should be called Kill Lightning. So I'm thinking about changing my name to that. Kill Lightning. Hey, sounds cool to me, man. Sean Asher said how he likes flowers and dirt. And he also says how he's been listening to the Turn Out The Lights album a lot recently and 
has found a new appreciation for the songwriting on it. Chelsea Girls India getting there. The thing is, I didn't write Chelsea Girls, it's Lou Reed. So um, I have to plead not guilty there. Um, India and um, getting there. I'm extremely proud of um, getting there. It was about a friend of mine who was killed. Um, so yeah. Andy Worthington said, who or what inspired you to pick up a guitar and become the galactic guitar guru you are today? I like that. <laughs> so speaking as a galactic guitar guru, um, I suppose, I mean, you know, I'm, I've been around a long time, it's like the land of the dinosaurs, I suppose it was originally um, Elvis uh, Presley, Chuck uh, Berry. Um, by the time George Harrison arrived, I was like extremely in to George Harrison and I still think an awful lot of his solos are, are fantastic. I mean, all my, my loving, something, great. Um, so I picked it up approximately at that point. I was um, I was eleven. So um, that was nineteen sixty three. My God. Um, I suppose then it was Keith Richards and Jeff Beck, who was in the Yardbirds, and he just had such astronomical sound and an incredible ability to create solos. Um, then Clapton and Hendrix, um, but initially it was Chuck and Elvis, absolutely man. Okay, um, Graham Williams asked, are you doing a UK tour in the near future and if so, are you planning on getting to Sheffield? Um, Yes, Graham, we are hoping to tour in October and November. Um, I don't have um, the dates as it is. I know that we're playing in Keighley. Um, I don't really know about Sheffield at the moment. I mean, the problem is, I'm happy to play any place, um, only you have to have a promoter and you have to have um, a place that wants to book you. and. These days, it's like pretty much a lot of places just want tribute bands. I try to be a tribute band. I play like um, Gillen tracks, kind of everything else I played on, but I'm not a tribute band, so it becomes hard. You have to be paid. You know, it isn't a cheap um, uh, thing. You know, to have musicians and travel all the way up in the country and have you know, hotels and all of that, so you have to be paid. So it depends actually on the, the promoters and the venues. Sheffield, I can't tell you about just at the moment. Um, I ought to know in a week or two. I hope it's happening. Who knows? Thank you. Okay, Paul Hickman asked me about um, the bits of Strat I play. Right, so um, this is a strat that I sort of stealth built um, from parts. Um, it's um, basically an older body because I like older bodies. They sound best to me. Um, it's um, one piece also best if it isn't uh, two pieces. Um, the neck is a C profile, um, basically 62-ish and um, I have normal um, fender frets on it and um, I have an ebony fingerboard because they're a tiny bit, I don't know, Oh, brighter than 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 um, rosewood are. I have um, so it is basically a copy of um, the white sixty two. Um, I've had just about all my life. Um, 
and it's beautiful. Um, the pickups are basic standard Strat pickups. Um, they're Fender um, wire, slightly overwound. Um, they're basically 62 pickups. Um, I haven't anything clever on it. I have um, the pots and the kind of condensers and um, uh, that are all drop thingies, um, drop thingies. I can't even remember the name. Of them. It's all traditional um, because to, to me that's what I like. You know, it isn't as if it's uh, you know I swear. That's what you have to have. It works for my hands and how I play. I th think that's just about it on it. It's, um, yeah. Clusens on, on the head. I like Clusens. And um, that's about it, really. Thank you. Okay, um, Richard Trevino asked, is there any story about the eye patch? Actually, there is. It's a... Uh, an interesting tale. Um, I was, you know, in in Gillen. John and Colin and I were always trying to um, create an image. Basically, you know? <laughs> it was like, well, you know, try to have people um, notice us, you know, because um, other people, we at the time weren't on. Um, a large international um, label. It was Acrobat originally, so Acrobat was an indie. So it was um, try to have you know audiences notice us and remember us. And I thought, well, I'll try an eye patch. So I went out to a kind of a joke shop, I bought an eye patch, and um, the next day we were actually playing. Um, the uh, Oxford Poly show that was on um, the BBC and is out on their DVD now. At the end of it, I smashed up uh, the guitar, and um, my roadie Cliff was standing behind my guitar amps. And at the beginning of it, he pushed too hard, and the amp came off and hit me in the eye. So I had this like huge black eye because I had actually had the eye patch and I thought, no, that looks stupid, can't really wear that. So the next day we had uh, a photo session for Future Shock and I had this bloody huge <laughs> black eye. So I had to put the eye patch on and that was actually the reason I had the eye patch on in the picture. I've told it different ways. Um, because I've actually said I had to get the eye patch because I had a black eye, but that's not true. I actually had the eye patch. I had bought it the day before. I got the, you know, the black eye. It was really quite spooky, but handy I had it, you know. So, and it became an image. Mind you, it was terrible on top of the pops, you know, because I kept on like walking into things, you know. But I almost had two black eyes there. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, Richard Trevino asks also about, is there any story to tell about um, the time Richie Blackmore was on stage um, with uh, me and Gillen at the Rainbow? Um, yeah, it was, it was um, a strange experience, that, because... Um, Everyone in the band was really paranoid because um, Richie had apparently come down to ask, to ask Ian to rejoin Purple. So John and Colin were, and I suppose um, Mick too, were extremely paranoid about it. I didn't think an awful lot about it because you know it was like well he was. Ian at some point was obviously going to rejoin and if it was then it would have happened. I wasn't paranoid about it. So um, Richie came on and jammed and it was, it was, um, 
he kind of seemed to think that I was going to kind of like go salam, you know, the great, I mean, he was a hero, but um, if he was on the s stage in a band that um, I was in, I was going to give him a run for his money, and I did, I think, so... Uh, it was a great experience. I mean, you know, jamming with him, he's a great player. And um, apparently he went out um, with Ian after the gig and signed autographs. And Ian signed the pieces of paper first and Richie signed after that. And according to Ian, Richie signed his name across Ian's name. <laughs> I don't know how true that is. The politics of purple. Okay, thanks everybody. That's it for now. Um, I'll be carrying on on all of the other questions in a day or so, or two days, or whatever. Cheers. Thank you.